All righty, so everyone is talking about this merger between Six Flags and Cedar Fair, and I've definitely made a lot of videos on the subject already, but I'm here to talk about next steps. So I've done a lot of communicating with some people in the industry. Um, I hold some stocks um, in Cedar Fair, not Six Flags, um, but I've definitely had some great conversations with people that have both. Um, and I've definitely come back with um, some really good information about some of the next steps that's going to happen in this merger. So first of all, um, I guess I'll go over kind of like what I know about what's going to happen in happen in terms of the audit process. Um, so for those of you that don't know, essentially what's going to happen is Six Flags is going to audit the Cedar Fair parks and Cedar Fair is going to audit the Six Flags parks and they're going to do this through a third party company. And essentially it's just to make sure that no one is hiding any information a part of this merge, that all the information provided is accurate, the budget sheets, the balance sheets, the attendance, um, the ex expeditures, all that information um, is correct. So. Um, there will be no changes for the 2024 and 2020, uh, sorry, for the 2024 season. Um, there will be no season pass launch um, that'll get you into all the parks in the 2024 season. Um, they are aiming to have that on the table for the 2025 season. Um, but basically, the decision was made in January. So the conversation for the merge happened last January, like it started last January. So definitely um, some key information because I'm gonna be honest, it all makes sense for those of you that have watched my videos. Some of the things we've been seeing starting to happen at Canada's Wonderland, and I'm sure all of your other home parks have been kind of the same. There's some signs. The technology coming very similar to Six Flags technology, even Wonderland switching over to the new security system about halfway, three quarters of the way through the season this year was definitely a sign because we switched over to some of the Six Flags uh, security technology. But basically auditors will come um, into the park, Cedar Fair and Six Flags, to go over assets and compare them to what's in the books. Um, so this is scheduled to start as early as April before the park opening um, and this one I know for Wonderland, uh, essentially Wonderland will be open, uh, audited around April. Um, and some of the seasonal, some of the, uh, non-seasonal parks, the parks that are open year round, their audits will begin this January and February. Um, they need this done before filings for the merger can be done with the SEC. Um, so definitely, uh, very important to have all that done. Um, but Essentially, uh, there's a couple things I want to talk about because a lot of the dis discussions going on on some channels, including mine on the podcast, um, was around if federal um, bureaucracy will get in the way and kind of like prevent this from happening because it's becoming a conglomerate. And there's laws and stuff that protect American citizens in the states from conglomerate um, companies forming and making the no competition clause. Well, that is actually not going to happen. So as much as this is a really big company forming, um, and it really is going to impact pricing um, and any future competition that can come to the area, there is still competition out there and substantial competition. So at the end of the day, they still aren't any competition to Disney and Universal, and they are healthy competition to parks like SeaWorld Entertainment. So it is not actually becoming the super conglomerate that will take over everything. So there will no be there will not be any red tape in terms of that. So that's my understanding of that. That's what my sources have said, that this is actually a go. And the only thing they're waiting on now is uh, Six Flags shareholders uh, to do their vote. But also, I received even further information about that. Um, a lot of the uh, really big accounts that hold a majority of the shares in Six Flags have already voted yes. So this is expected to 100% go through. There really isn't any doubt that Six Flags shareholders are going to vote no. Um, and the ones that are saying they're going to vote no aren't going to outweigh those big corporations and those big billionaires that hold a lot of value and decision making in the shareholders um, at Six Flags. So this is expected to get voted through. 
is important information, number one, uh, with the shareholders of Six Flags. Two, there is no um, federal red tape that is actually going to get in the way of this decision. Um, and three, the audit process is about to begin. Again, non-seasonal parks, parks that are open year-round, should see their audits uh, around January, February. And then seasonal parks like Canada's Wonderland should see their audits starting in um, end of March all the way through to June. So um, yeah, I thought that was really key information um, about next steps for Six Flags and Cedar Fair joining forces. Um, and yeah, that's all I have right now, but I really wanted to pass that on to you guys. I will keep you guys as updated as possible with any information that I learn. I am going, I have a couple of videos I'm working on right now. I have a video I'm working on about King's Dominion, um, specifically King's Dominion. And then I have some videos I'm working on about the Texas parks as well. Um, so I'm, I'm not going to reveal too much about that, but I want to talk about those two specific areas and parks um, in depth because I have some really crazy thoughts about that. But anyways, thanks so much for following along. Um, comment down below if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. Um, and hopefully you're enjoying the coverage that I'm providing on this. Thanks so much, guys. Have a good one. Bye.